Hi, dear friends. It's Monday, and it's week three in our six-part series on enacting personal change in our lives. So this week, we're going to be covering how to grow our community and tribe, and also how to support our new changes with our habits. So I have a created and attached an outline within this video description for your use to integrate these concepts into your life. So, so much of what happens in the personal development world is very conceptual, and I've worked very hard to make this easily actionable for you. So grab that outline, because I'm not gonna go through everything that's in the outline. I just wanna give you an overview in the video to keep it nice and short. So, community. It's never been easier across the history of time to connect with like-minded people. And you know you have some really positive friends on Facebook or any of the social media sites you use, and I would encourage you to um, amend the settings on your Facebook so that those are the things that you're seeing, but also join other groups that are centered and focused on positivity and upliftment, and that will be a really easy switch for you to keep introducing more of that support into your life. But additionally, I want to talk about developing a tribe. So this is your inner circle of friends, your closest confidants, the people whose values you really respect and who you trust to give you honest and uh, exquisite feedback that really comes from a place of deep care. So find those people in your life. And Gary Vaynerchuk is uh, an interesting speaker, and he talks about having like a summit evening where you bring everybody over for a dinner party and give them sort of free reign to offer you feedback. So in whatever way feels right to you, start to facilitate some feedback from your tribe and let that be something that supports you. And in addition to getting that feedback, be sure that you share with them your aspirations and endeavors so that they can support you in what you're up to. Additionally, it's a good idea to start to look for a mentor, and there are a lot of ways to do this, and a ton are listed in the outline that I referenced. But um, it's a really, and it doesn't have to be somebody that you know, and that's, the, I think, the most important point to make. It can be a great author that you like, a speaker, a public figure, but somebody that you really resonate with. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be reciprocal, but it is very powerful to also have a reciprocal mentor relationship where you get to go back and forth with that person, but also just being studious um, to the teachings of those that you really respect can be powerful as well. So we've taken that from community to tribe to mentor on a more granular level in order to create support. But the second piece of this idea is habits. And so again, in the outline below, there's a link to a phenomenal habit assessment that will actually help walk you through which habits you have in place, how, whether or not they're really serving you, and which habits you should um, develop in order to support what it is that you're intending for in this life. It's a super powerful activity, and I would encourage you to especially look at the habits that surround the topic you're trying to change. So to put that in context, if you're working on your marriage, think about your communication habits, um, your daily routine habits, and all the habits that surround that particular topic, and evaluate all habits through the lens of whether or not they are supporting or tearing down your intentions for a new way of being. So plug those good ones in and then stay with it. And if you fall off, that's okay. That's probably going to just happen. Um, but it's an opportunity for you to recalibrate, realign, and get back to what it is that you are endeavoring to create. This week is a special week because we're also combining next week's idea, which is the ongoing audit system. And I wanted to just give you um, an opportunity to think about what this looks like as you continue to move through your life. So once your intentions, mission statement, goals, and habits are all written out, it's the perfect platform from which to audit yourself. And audit's a rough word, maybe a recalibration is a better one. And there's like something on my face. So when you have all those things written out, you have the opportunity then to measure yourself against how effectively you're moving the needle. And I would encourage you to think of this process as polishing the jewel or refining because that's what you're up to. It's just an ongoing journey that leads to a journey that leads to a journey. And so work through um, an audit for yourself and do it on a uh, schedule that feels right to you. So for some people that'll be a daily, daily audit. 
Uh, maybe some people will dial it in weekly, monthly is a good time, and I think a quarterly audit is really important. Um, it gives you a sense around what you have been working on and go on little babies. Sorry, they just love a little honey flower. Um, so consider how auditing looks moving forward and allow that to be the unfolding of increased momentum as you work on some things in your life that you're wanting to find even greater joy in. And I'm so excited. Next week's my favorite, favorite week because we're going to talk about summiting and celebrating the progress that we've made. And it's such an overlooked step in creating personal change that I absolutely cannot wait to talk about it. So please come back next week. I can't wait to see you then. And I hope you have a stunning, enchanting, magnificent week. Bye for now.